All right. For our second video today, we're going to continue on talking about items and gear uh, from Absolute Power. So how to craft items, how to create items, item creating, item crafting, <laughs> whatever terms I'm supposed to use here, uh, through Absolute Power's book one, The System Book. And I mentioned this for folks on the live stream, but I'll mention it for folks on the video right now, is uh, I, uh, I will not be covering book two, but book two is pretty much just Game Master information uh, and a lot of lore. L additional, I should say additional Game Master information. A lot of good Game Master information in this book already, but it's going to include uh, much more lore and uh, how, to, uh, how to put together your world building for the purposes of, uh, of absolute power. So let's get started here. I think I said it was page 235. If, come on. I typed in. There you go. Okay, and, we're, and this one, we're just going to look over some stuff. I don't know how, excuse me, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but uh, I'll probably read the section intros and we're going to look over some, some different items here. But weapons, the weapons listed in this chapter are described briefly so that players can either scroll this over here. So the players can either assign them to their characters directly or use them as templates when creating other similar weapons. For example, by simply increasing the weapon level and thus damage of a longsword, it's possible to create various magic or high-tech swords or simply swords made from more durable and damaging materials. Uh, one that's used in science fiction a lot is uh, uh, vibro swords. Now, could that be another attribute of some sort? It could be. Or it could just be that, hey, I call it a vibro sword because it has this extra damage applied to it. Then you got uh, splash weapons, like throwing acid at somebody, a Molotov cocktail. Archaic melee weapons, battle axes, spears, swords, whips, wooden stakes. There you go. The favorite weapon of vampire slayers. That is right. Uh, and here we go. Now, you don't have to make your item exactly as it says here. These are just the default ones or the basic ones put in the book that you probably want for for your character but you can do so much more than what this is in than what's in the book so you can have uh brass knuckles which give you potent too and i don't remember what that means <laughs> uh but it's non-penetrating so that means armor you get an armor bonus against brass knuckles now you can have a spiked gauntlet which also has potent uh Unfortunately, I, I wish I remembered what that meant off the top of my head. I am not going to scroll back to it, but you can see that it does have enhancements. It does have limiters. It ends up costing, uh, it's worth two points, so therefore it costs one point. Why is that? Because it's an item. If it's got two points worth of attributes of abilities, you half of that, and it becomes one point. Items are always half. Now, let's look at uh, our acid here. You have an acid flask. Well... It's got five levels worth of uh, capability, but it only costs two levels because it has a ton of uh, area one, conscious of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know where this math comes from. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight right there. And then you have four. So that'd be three. Huh. Okay, I, I don't know. Uh, I I would have to look at how all the points are added up here. I don't know why it says 5-2 here. But I'm not going to dwell on that. Maybe you know, and you can put that into the comments. There's probably something really simple that I'm missing from the character creation side of it that, uh, I'm, not, that I'm not remembering. But you can see that the enhancements are area, so that means it's going to splash. Uh, whatever it contacts... So it doesn't have to penetrate. It's whatever it contacts. It's continuing, which means it lasts round after round after round. I don't know what continuing three is, if that's like 10 minutes or, you know, three rounds or, or whatever. I, I don't know. But it lasts, well, definitely lasts more than one hit, right? So the acid is burning through. So each round, it's going to do its damage. And range two, which if I remember, that's what, 10 meters? Again, I, I forget all the specifics, but it's in the charts here. But its limiters are ammo, so uh, I don't know what ammo for means. If it means he gets four throws with it, or <laughs> again, I'd, the 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 specific numbers I'd have to look up what they are. And it's inaccurate because it's not a throwing knife; it's not a bullet. I mean, you're throwing something that's not the most. It's 
not really intended to be thrown. So it is inaccurate, so it makes it a little bit harder. I think it's a minor, um, I want to call it a Bane uh, obstacle. What does this game call it? Why am I forgetting all my terms for this game? Anyway, it's it's a, it's like a minor obstacle, minor Bane. So you'd be rolling 3d6 and taking the lowest two, if I remember correctly, uh, for accurate. Uh, Bastard Sword, its enhancement is that it is accurate. So, Bastard Sword, if you're using it two-handed, it becomes an accurate weapon. But, it requires you, the limit is it requires both your hands. A Bastard Sword, using it one hand, that's the whole point of a Bastard Sword, also known as the hand and a half sword, is you can use it one-handed or two-handed, effectively. Well, one-handed is just a normal, uh, everything's normal about it, right? But if you use a two-handed, you get the the accurate, so it's easier for you to hit, but it requires both your hands to do it. That makes sense. Now, why can't you just say, well, of course it requires both your hands, because it says two-handed. Well, because items that require the use of two hands have to ha has to actually have the limiter applied to it. It's also what gives them the points for the accurate. So by getting the points for hands, you can spend the points for accurate and have everything cost the same, 6-3. Okay? Um, a shield bash, weighted chain. It's always fun. Same da uh Yes, it looks like it's the same damage for one or two-handed. What you get out of the bastard sword for two-hand though is accurate, unless accurate also um, uh, applies damage. I don't know off the top of my head. I'm not gonna go back and look at it. My understanding is that this provides uh, you a minor boon. Uh, I forget what the why, what is the actual term in this game. Uh, basically, you're going to roll 3d6 and you take the highest two. So it's going to give you a bonus to hit effectively. It's driving me nuts that I cannot remember, you know, what, what page is this, 237? I, I, that I'm not getting the right term here. The, da, 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 where is it? Role playing game session zero. Stats and derived values, character attributes. Where is this? Quick enhancements, limiters, defects opposed to a margin of success skill rules, stat rules, edges and obstacles that's what it is, edges and obstacles so edge is a bonus, obstacle is the, is the minus so oops I didn't even go to the page that I was reading so, you'll get the bonus to hit now uh, if, if accurate also says you get a bonus uh, to damage, which I doubt it does because he, he's pretty particular about the words that he uses, but uh, then that would apply as well. But it's definitely going to be a bonus to hit. Why he picked that over damage, I, I don't know. But you could always do... So here, here's the thing. You could always do that. Now, would it cost more points? Yeah, absolutely. But you could add damage to the weapon. So you can be both accurate and, or if you want to in your game, I don't want to be more accurate. I just want to do more damage. You can maybe, swap, as long as the points line up, it might be that the points don't line up for that. But if the points line up, then make it, uh, uh, have it do more damage. These are just the way it's given in the game. All of the, every single one of these items, you could put uh, flexible. So here we go, flexible, right? Would it necessarily make sense? No. But you can, because there's no limit other than your imagination or the game master saying, eh, come on now. Uh, you could put flexible on here too, so that uh, that the sword not only is accurate, but even if you try to block it or you know, parry it with something, it could bend down and still hit you. That's dumb. <laughs> or interesting, depending on how you want to look at it, because I don't think that would be a bastard sword anymore. But the idea is you absolutely could do that. Um... Then you got uh, ranged weapons, arrows, axes, bolts, a ram. Wait, oh, that's that's a siege weapon. Okay. You throw a rock. Is a rock an item, or is it gear, or is it mundane? Hmm. If I pick up a rock off the ground, now I know I'm exaggerating when I say this, but I remember when I was playing champions in the '90s, I used to get really annoyed at things like that. I want to pick up a rock. Well, you don't have the points for it. It's just a rock. Yeah, but if you want to throw a rock and have it do damage. You have to spend points for it, otherwise you can't do this. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that was a bit excessive. And I think the the point of them telling me that wasn't to screw me over. I think it was to like understand that you can't bypass the point system. Uh, you, you can't bypass the point system by just finding deadly mundane items. 
However, there are points, even in, in absolute power here, where, yes, you could find somebody's gun and shoot it. Should that cost points? Not not if it's relevant to the story and not if it's like a, a one time deal or you got the, you know, the five rounds left in the revolver or something like that. Some rocks are harder than others are sharper. But yeah, no, no, I <laughs> I get that. I'm just saying that uh, if there's a rock on the ground, you probably can throw it. Now, how much damage is it going to do? Eh. And why would you have to pay the point cost for that if it's a one use item? You know, but those are things to consider. What, what if a character is always finding things outside the points, uh, the point system? There probably is, actually, I'm not even going to say there probably is, I know there is. There is an attribute you can give the character that allows them to do that, that can pick up a rock, that always mysteriously seems to have a rock or a chair leg or a, uh, uh, you know, a hubcap or something that he can throw at somebody uh, around him. There's, you could do that based on the powers, if that's going to be part of the character's stick. Uh, all right. So anyway, archaic weapons here. Got crossbow. Crossbows are penetrating with a range of three. If it's a heavy crossbow, range of two. If it's a light crossbow, no penetrating attribute. If uh, if it's just a hand crossbow, but hey, you know what? It's small. Uh, wow, lassos are inaccurate. All oh. you got the siege items. Look at all those limiters on here. Whew. Which is why it's a level eight item. But it works as a level 10 item. Yeah. Range 3. So that would be... Yeah, I don't know how they got the numbers in this. For my hairpin, Monday, uh, Monday item. With the, yeah, because what's your hairpin going to do, right? Now, if you turn it into some sort of gambit thing, where you energize it and it goes boom, okay, that's a different... Uh, that's a different story. A battle yo-yo? I don't even want to know. <laughs> you got a battle yo-yo. You can make anything. I'm sure that's based on some character he's gotten here. Maybe even a real superhero. I don't know. But... Now you got something like a stunner. There you go. It's incapacitating at four levels. But it does require ammo. So you can only use it so many times. I don't know what ammo one means. Like you can, Is it like a taser you can use once and you're done? You can use tasers twice. Whatever. I get the point. All right. You have flamethrowers and submachine guns, tasers and rockets and stinger missiles. Oh, I want to see what a stinger missile does. Flamethrower, stinger. I know stingers for shooting. No, okay. Stinger missile. Area homing, infrared, penetrating, range five. Okay. It's got, ooh, it's got backlash. Now, that's pretty cool. We had somebody in, an, in I think it's in our Twilight 2000 game, point out that, uh, well, if you want to get super realistic about it, there'd be backblast from using, you know, certain uh, certain items and so forth. Well, look at that. This game actually has the limiter of backblast. I don't know what it does, but it has the limiter of backblast. It requires ammo, of course, environmental, so uh, it can only shoot air targets. And it's stoppable. I don't know what stoppable means. Uh, exactly, but, uh, but that means there, it definitely has a weakness to something. But it, it goes boom, it has an area of effect, it's homing, it's penetrating, and it has a range of five. And I, I'm thinking five is ten hundred, is that a kilometer, five kilometers, three kilometers, something. So, got heat and sable rounds. Tomahawk missile, there you go. Range of seven, <laughs> they go pretty far. Hyper technology, got the energy whip, the monofilament garrote. Light sword, neural net. We've got missile launchers. We got blaster rifles. We got magma cannons now. Remember, we mentioned the magma cannon in the last video. One of the superheroes here has the magma cannon. Is that the magma cannon? I don't know. Doesn't look like magma. Uh, let's look at where's the magma cannon on here. There's there we go. Mass driver. Oh, mass driver. There you go for your starships. Mass drivers. One hundred and ten points. <laughs> Okay, Magma Cannon, here we go, Area 5. He's built six of these things since World War II, right? Area 5, that means he's got a big blast radius. Continuing, that means it's like acid or maybe it's nuclear or something. Well, it's like magma, right? It's just going gonna to sit there. It's not going to go boom and all the magma goes away. No, it's going to sit around for a while, being hot. Walking on hot coals, don't do that. So Area 5, continuing 4. Indirect, so that means it can shoot over stuff. Penetrating, that's some... 
Okay. Uh, so uh, it's going to go through your armor and range of six. And it goes pretty far. Not quite as far as a Tomahawk missile, but pretty darn far. Uh, it can probably be traced and taken out with radar other uh, or another missile. That could be. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. We did not have the time to go through all of the uh, of the enhancements and limiters because, as you can see, just by looking at this page, there are a ton of them. But that might, you might be right about that. I mean, it makes sense, right? Now we got armor, and of course we've got ancient style armor with uh, full plate, hide, leather, ringmail, scale. Thick leather jacket, chain shirt, heavy body armor for your conventional armor out here. And level one armor rating a two. Four. All these are armor rating ten. Why is this only a two? Oh, it's thick fur. Tough hide. I wonder what a polar bear. What does a polar bear have? <laughs> thick hide and thick fur? Hyper technology. Power armor, force armor, shields. Uh, we're going to read shields here for a second because they do work a little differently. Shields are designed to deflect, deflect blows and turn them aside when possible, but can also absorb the impact of blows when interposed between the character and an attack. See page 182. We did talk about this uh, a little bit in the combat section. Shields are popular accessories due to their heroic nature, symbolizing defense rather than harm. A shield bought as an item can be used for deflection and reflection, so deflection and reflection combat techniques against any attack with a physical component. Though usually reserved for level 1 attributes, some larger shields have the Potent Enhancement, which provides the targeted character a minor or major edge when defending. Oh, so, so Potent is literally just, okay, adding... I thought Potent was, uh, was like... Uh, oh my god. It was like Penetration, but no, no, no. Potent is for adding your minor or major edge when defending. So if we're looking at... I know we're going back to weapons for a second, but... We looked at one of those weapons with Potent. Where is it? Direct penetrating. I'm just going to find the first one I see that has potent on it. Penetrating, penetrating, penetrating. Oh, where are these? Penetrating. I'm going to find... Excuse me, I had a hiccup there. Uh, find with uh, potent... Do, do, do. Where is it? Where are you? I'm going to find it. There you go. Potent one. Axe throwing axe is potent. So... Is that for... So it gets a, a an edge for an attack? Huh. Okay. But it's also inaccurate. I don't get that. I'd have to read more on potent. Because why would it be both inaccurate and uh, and potent? Maybe they cancel each other out? Huh. I don't know. Alright. Uh, and again, uh, part of us doing these read-throughs isn't specifically to teach you everything about the game like we're experts on this it's to we some of this especially for um absolute powers we're learning the game with you now next year the games we cover next year we pretty much know those games there's one exception to that where i know it and i don't think heathen dog does but uh but we know the games we cover next year this one we're learning it along with you so feel free to put in the comments. And by the way, oh, please, please, please timestamp comments when you put things in there. You know, if you say in there, oh, it means this. I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm not going to watch a 30-minute video to try to figure out what your comment was about. So please timestamp. All right. They usually reserved for level 1 attributes, some larger shields of potent enhancement, which provides targeted characters a minor or a major edge when defending with a shield. And say, uh, page 172, it bounced for a second. Now it's not bouncing. Anyway, you got different sizes of shields. Got energy shields, composite shields. It's to cover all the different themes that you could uh, you could have with your character. Maybe you want a a Nordic berserker that wears uh, hides and carries a, an ancient style shield. That doesn't mean you can't power that thing up to make it invincible because he's a superhero. Or maybe you want to be a a super heroic dude who wears spandex and has a you know a see through like a gem shield like this guy's carrying, right? You can do all of that, and you can see the the table there. All right, adventuring equipment. So we've got conventional gear, an explosive collar. Why does that not sound like conventional gear? How is an explosive collar 
<laughs> Conventional gear. Yeah, you know, everybody's got one. These collars are placed around the necks of criminals to deter their escape and ensure compliance. Okay. I'm not sure a nice guy is going to put an explosive collar around somebody's neck. On Sentinel Earth, Earth, they are most often used on supervillains forced to perform the dirty work of governments or corporations. Including the modern version of elite operations. Sorry, I was looking back for a second there. They are most often used on supervillains. If the wearer attempts to remove the collar, the powerful explosive within detonates instantly in a nasty explosion that usually ends in death. The mind-based technical difficulty of bypassing the system is target number 24. Wow! Now, of course, if you're playing epic-level heroes, that's probably not such a big deal, but for your normal 2D6 roller, you have to have a 2D6, right? And then you have to somehow find yourself a plus 12 bonus to that. Good luck! <laughs> you should go without question that explosive collars are spectacularly illegal as they are immoral. Note, the point cost of the explosive collar is paid by the person or group in control of the detonator, not the wearer. Okay, you know, that is both a very smart note and the dumbest note I've ever seen. But, no, it's very smart. I say it's a dumb note because, duh, but you know how players are going to be. So he had to put it in here. So, yes, I'm glad it's there. It's just like, really? Really? And then I think, like, oh, yeah. Yep. It's, he's wearing it. It's not my points. Oh. <laughs> All right. So it costs 30 points. And uh, trap, uh, so explosion. It's got or minus one. Trap, attempting to remove the collar, triggers the trap. Uh, unique enhancement can be activated. By, oh, it can be activated by remote control also. Awesome. You know what? I'm done with you. Psh, boom. <laughs> Ammo, single use, plus four. So, that goes kablooey. Uh, and then we got first aid kits. We're not going to look at everything in here. This, again, just gives you an idea of things to, uh, what you can what you can do so infrared goggles how how do you make infrared goggles well you give it super sense it can go to one kilometer which what is that range four or five i i don't remember all the range chart but uh, it has infrared vision so that's it's one super sense and if i remember correctly when you pick super sense you get one for free don't quote me on that one but that's if i'm remembering correct, correctly you get one for free any additional has to be an enhancement and it goes uh, one kilometer. So it's uh, level three, but it's only a one point item because you round down when you. Uh, so three divided by two, right? So it's total of a three point three point character for now. But since it's an item, you divide it by two, which would be one and a half. And absolute power says you round down when you do that. Oops. We got laser sights. Hopefully you can read that. I just don't want to zoom in too much on it because we're going to be zooming in and out, in out, in out, in out. And I'm going to give people epileptic fits. Night vision goggles. So I already looked at first aid kits. 3D maneuvering gear. What is maneuvering gear? Can it represent anything from a special harness that shoots out and reels and grappling hooks to wrist mounted adhesive lines that permit travel from one surface to another. Okay. So it can be Spider Man <laughs> wrist mounted adhesive lines. I like that. Uh, but. Okay, so you can you can swing and climb, go places, while bouncing. There you go, cat like fast too while bouncing. So it's got a bunch of things, but it's got defects, special requirement. So you have to connect it to something. Can't just shoot out into space and or connect it to the air. Uh, combat robot drone. It's a thirty point item, so it ends up costing fifteen points. It's got a lot of stuff on it. It's actually almost a full character in and of itself, if you look at it. Um, hacking gear, identity net spy gear, automaton Omega. What is that? Built by the sinister technocratic conspiracy conspiracy sector. Automaton Omega was intended to be the ultimate anti superhero weapon, towering sixty stories above its foe. Uh, well, if they use stories the same way we do, it's at twelve feet, if I remember correctly. 12 times 60, that's math. I don't want to do it. Uh, armed with a massive cannon and bristling with point defense lasers, this truly giant robot was expected to overcome even the most powerful metahumans. However, it is slow and clumsy with only basic AI. 
The redesign for a pilot's use, the artificer, the artificer stole Automaton Omega before Sector could redeploy it. The dreaded super weapon has changed hands several times since then, devastating in its power, but never able to overcome Earth's heroes. Who's got it this week? I don't know. Extra actions. It can hold 10 people. So it's a it's a it's a robot armored personnel character. It's immovable. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're that big, nobody's just going to be pushing you. Right. Minus 70 meters to knock back. So if you're normally able to punch somebody and knock them back 70 meters dead to a normal person, but, you know, it's superheroes. This guy's just like, no. Reincarnation. What? One day, difficult to stop. Destroy all repair mini robots. Oh, okay. Super strength with 500,000 tons. That's a lot. And plus 100 to unarmed damage. If it punches you, you pretty much just say you die. <laughs> all right. It's awkward size. And impaired manipulation. One hand left arm is the Omega. Oh, so it can't use its left arm because it's an Omega cannon, not, uh, not a hand. So, 720 feet. Thank you. All right, let's uh, keep looking at things here. Uh, you're getting the idea that there's a lot of stuff that you can uh, that you can make. And these are just examples that are core to the canon, core to the system, core to the Sentinel Earth world, but your world, or even if you're just adding on to it, you're using this setting, but you're adding on to it, you can make so much more. It's just giving you an idea of the point cost. Remember, one of, one of the examples was just take one of the, if you want a deep sea diving suit but want to add stuff to it or take stuff away from it, just start with this. It's a 15 point item, seven total points when it's done, but a 15 point item, and you can add and subtract as you want and then come up with a new point total. So it's a good starting point. Super Soldier Booster? What the heck is that? Uh... Most stable formula descended from Sentinel Earth's Project Anodyne. The Super Soldier Booster formula grants a modest superhuman physique to the subject. If it works. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to zoom in on that in case somebody's watching something small. If it works. <laughs> so this is, uh, was it the Vought Serum from the boys? The person applying the temporary version of the formula must make a mind-based science skill group role within... Uh, with a target number of 15. If the application is successful, the subject gains the super soldier attributes below. Okay. Uh, what's that? I like the layout fonts. Yes, I I like everything of what he's done with this book, although we have found, and these are legit things, not not the stuff that, that I bark about that may or may not matter to other people. Um, anybody on my Discord knows there's a conversation going on about some of that right now. But, uh, Yes, I, I absolutely like the layout. He's got some typos in here. He's got some missed commas. Like the, the editing of this is, uh, and I only say this because this is an updated PDF. It isn't like the first one that went out. So hopefully some of those get corrected soon. We, we've caught a few. But generally speaking, absolutely yes. It gives a superhero vibe. It's easy to read. Uh, it's got good uh, uh, title headings and so forth. Like, yes, I agree with you. I, I like the layout. I like the way it's put together. Uh, all right, so what do we get as a super soldier here? I wanted to look at this. Metamorphosis super soldier. Uh, creator attribute. What is? I don't understand why this is broken into multiple. So booster creator. Oh, are there different levels? Oh, the permanent variation. Okay, okay, hold on. So, so this target number of fifteen subject game super soldier. Attributes below and becomes incredibly strong fast. So the super soldier, this is the booster right here. So we read up above, this is the booster. So you 40 points for one hour. So you get uh, super, I don't know what super soldier 40 points is for one hour, but you get it for one hour. Um, is uh, super soldier attributes. Okay, so here's the 40 points right here. You get armor rating of five. Augmented body. Or augmented based on the body attribute. Regeneration. Resilient. To aging, airborne toxins, disease, lack of air, lack of... Oh, hey, you can work out in a vacuum. Good job. Uh, lack of sustenance, poison. Super speed and super strength. If I remember correctly, lack of air does have a limitation to it. Like, you can't be in a vacuum forever. Or without air forever. But uh, uh, actually, this doesn't actually say vacuum on it, does it? So it just says lack of air. So you, you can handle a, a, a deoxygenated 
deoxygenized, oxygenized, whatever the word would be, <laughs> situation better than the normal person, but at some point you're still going to need to breathe. Super speed, you can run 100 kilometers per hour. That's about 100, uh, that's about 62 kilo, uh, two miles per hour. And super strength, 500 kilograms, uh, about two point, times that by 2.2. So is it 1,200 pounds, something like that? Uh, plus 10 unarmed damage. So, not bad for 40 points. Or actually, I'm sorry, not bad for 4 points. Uh, hazmat animal multi-suit. I don't know if I want to know this. It's often found among magical societies, high-tech variants. Once a character dons this form-fitting body suit, he gains numerous innate animal abilities. Okay, so you can gain, basically turn into Aquaman or Wolverine or some crap like that. Uh, Valkyrie Corps armor, Union suit, and then we have vehicles. That's right, we talked about you making your base and some vehicles, and a typical passenger automobile, automobile, is uh, seven points or a three total point item. Uh, let's see, sports cars can be four points because it can go zoom, zoom, zoom. Commercial airliner, seven points. Construction vehicle, seven points. Military helicopter is 73 points. So this is a 146-point item. But I don't even have 146 points to create my character. Well, I guess you're not getting this helicopter then, are you? Only cost 73, though, in the end. So maybe your character's a gimp. He's just really good at flying a helicopter. But you can see all the attributes on here. And then it's defects. So it's it's big, unfortunately. Uh, it needs frequent maintenance, and it has a weakness uh, with the rotors. But they're difficult to hit, so that's nice. <laughs> so compare that to the civilian helicopter. Yeah, five. Yeah, five points. Jet fighters, a ninety-point item. Luxury yacht, because that's what you need. Nuclear sub, one hundred and seventy or eighty-five points. Powerboat, tank heavy. You get the idea here. Hyper technology vehicles, aerospace strike fighter, interstellar battleship. Yamamoto. And uh, yeah, I zoomed in on it so people who want to pause it and see the points later can. Mecha. What kind of uh, anime fan <laughs> or superhero dude wouldn't have? mecha in here so that's right you can play your battletech games more so robotech games here i don't know what's what's a phase board artificer created these urban hoverboards oh okay it's hoverboard for south korea gimmick villain and her gang but the geoli oh, i can't uh i'll speak korean is that geoli or geoli it's english is geoli but it could be korean uh yeah say Seopeo, street surfers, but with an unfortunate explosive end before they could return to pick them up. Having no use for them himself, Artificer doubled his income by selling them into the open market. The, the small skateboard sized platform uses an anti grav repulsor tech and gyro stabilizers to hover up to a meter off the ground and skim along at respectable speeds. Its AI assisted flying program and high maneuverability make the rider difficult to target with ranged attacks. All right, we read enough there. There you go. Yep. 100 kilometers per hour, you're skimming, so that means you're just above the ground. Oh, it has a weapon, a paralysis beam. That's just mean. I think I'd rather die than be paralyzed. Of course, I'm not... You know what? shouldn't say that. Somebody might test it. <laughs> Space freighter. Uh, Wardenclyffe pulse carrier. Oh my god, do you see all these items in here that you can get? Breaking items. Ooh, do we want to talk about this? I think we do. Uh, the armor rating of an item indicates how much damage the object can stop, and it's dependent on the hardness and thickness of the material from which the object is made. The size of the object, how fragile the working parts may be, and how well it is constructed. For example, a hollow aluminum... Al <laughs> aluminum <laughs> pole will be far weaker than a solid aluminum pole of the same size. Physics don't go into it. Um... See, Table 10-4 item armor ratings provides rough armor ratings for common objects. GMs are encouraged to use this chart as a basis. That means you're free to modify it. 
when determining the armor ratings of objects encountered in their games. That means if your player says, no, uh, telephone metal telephone pole only has an armor rating of 10. Well, this one's a tough one and it has 15. Shut up. Uh, most vehicles don't have uniform armor ratings throughout the entire structure. Glass windows, general body coverings, and areas protecting important mechanical structures may have wildly varying armor ratings. Since the absolute power rules are intended to be more narrative than realistic, a reasonable average armor rating is determined for vehicles instead. Similar guidance can apply to any object or equipment. This is one of the things where I completely understand what he's doing here. I don't like it. I would rather you say, well, shooting glass is armor rating zero, or shooting metal is armor rating 10 or something like that. But that's just my preference. And you have health points, item damage, size and damage. We've already talked about a lot of this in the past. Penetrating versus items. If a weapon that has penetrating enhancement attacks an item, the damage is more likely to hasten the item's destruction. Each assignment of penetrating reduces the multiplier required to destroy the item by one. The converse is true with the non-penetrating limiter. So that's what non-penetrating meant above when we talk about, okay, so it makes it harder to destroy an item. You're still going to do damage to things, but it's harder to destroy an item. Got it. Oh, planetoid. I mean, because this is important. Earth has an armor rating of 460 in case you needed it. <laughs> Just on the off chance you're trying to wipe out the globe, well, guess what? It has an armor rating of 460. Just, just saying. So when you're trying to make your Arthur Dent uh, parking lot here, uh, that was a loud cat. Uh, yeah, it's 460 armor rating. So good luck. If you have a gun that can do, or, or a cannon, or a nuke that can do 460 damage, I'm out. Oh, blowing up worlds! Well, look at that, it even talks about it. We're not going to read that. <laughs> okay, okay, we're done. Oh, but you, but to, to be fair, this is it's part of the superhero genre, right? Somebody's always trying to blow up the world. So, there we go. Alright, once again, I pretty much kept up with most of the comments there. Uh... We are going to do a third video. It is going to be... Oh, I took it off the screen there, but it is going to be on companions I'm gonna and minions. Do, 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 do. Oh, good. This is just a bunch... This is just a list of them. So, we're not going to read every one. We're going to read the introduction. We're going to take a look at some various ones. Like, let's see, we got the business professional. This up here. The business professional, the intrepid reporter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, senators and soldiers and... Yeah, all types of companions and minions. We're going to take a look at those in the next video. Because, uh, you know, your companions cost points as well. And now we're going to figure out exactly how to put them together. Everything in this game is based on the point system. Okay, people who play the hero system already understand that. People who haven't played the hero system, well, the hero system works very much the same. Everything you want, whether it's your character, your vehicle, a base of operations, it doesn't matter. A companion. If it's important to your character concept and something that's related to your character, it's going to cost you points. Well, companions and minions are no different, and we're going to talk about that in the next video.